I first met Robin Barrett in February of 2019 inside the Veterans Home in Lebanon. He was happy, strong, and a real character. I've had a lot of fun over the time of life. And the fun continued, even at 94, when he parachuted last summer. He's lived enough for two lifetimes. No, I fell into a, into a place in my life where I met a lot of people that most people don't get a chance to meet. Five presidents of the United States. We visited the veterans' home to profile Robin because of his life of service, including his years in the Marines in World War II. I got stories I can tell till hell freezes over. He was 17 when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. His mother allowed him to join the Marines. Just a few months later, he was learning to jump out of airplanes. He barely survived the training. On the very first flight, instructors would test the Marines to see if they would really jump, catching them just before they left the plane. My turn came, I hooked up, came down, made a right turn, hit an air pocket, they missed me and I was gone. With no instructions about what to do or how to do it or a dang thing. He survived and became a mortar man, carrying the heavy base plate used with mortars. One day in combat, it saved his life. Weighed 82 pounds solid steel and at the end of the day somebody very politely said to me oh rob what happened to your base flight and nothing happened to my base flight suggests that you flip it over and take a look at the bottom and you could see where a damn little machine gun had walked right across that sucker and you know whose head was right behind it <laughs> i mean close yeah lots of close ones but uh, survived the whole damn bunch of them. 74 years ago, he was part of the U.S. assault of Iwo Jima. It was a heavily fortified island the Japanese used to issue early warnings to their mainland when American bombers were approaching. I had never, never seen that many naval craft in my life, anywhere. It proved a terrible fight, with 2,400 Marines killed. Yeah, everybody was scared. I didn't find an I didn't find an atheist anywhere. <laughs> he, he, they were in short number if there were any at all. No, it was all save me, God, God save me, please. He went on to a successful life as a salesman and little league baseball coach. I wanted to be one of the boys. He had little league teams. I wanted to play hardball, um, and it, Title IX hadn't come around, so I couldn't. <laughs> But I was out there on the practice field. Robin and his wife had four kids, three boys, and their baby girl, Dana. She rushed to the veterans' home from her house in Port Angeles, Washington, this past week. Her father had caught the coronavirus. You know, the guy has just dodged the bullet so many times with things. That's why everybody was kind of, especially us, we were hopeful that he's been through so much, maybe he can get through this one too. <laughs> Soon after the virus invaded the U.S., the veterans' home and the school next door stopped one of Robin's favorite activities, visiting with the grade school kids. He told me all about it during my visit. Some of them one arm, some of them two arms, you know, some of them three. They'll greet me any way possible. Really will, you know, and it's fun. And I'm like, seriously, Dad? It's like they're, they're protecting you and the children. So, but that was really hard on him because he loved going. He loved those kids. And the kids loved him and the teachers and the principal. They're all so sad now. Last week, Dana, like so many other family members around the country, visited her father through the window of his bedroom. Yeah, to have a, have a piece of glass between you and him and at a just And there was sun. He had a great room, but the sun glared in that window all day long. So I'm like going... <laughs> And, the, you know, up until when he was really bedridden and couldn't communicate, you know, I could get, uh, I think up until, I think Saturday, I still was getting him to, I could pound and wave at him and he'd kind of give me a smile and it was like, oh yeah, okay, you're still there, dad. <laughs> but earlier this week, he took a turn for the worst and passed away Tuesday at the veteran's home. She will miss the nightly ritual her dad used to call every night between six and seven. You know, yeah, 
I think after I get back to Port Angeles is when it's really going to hit me. Robin Barrett lived to the age of 95, a full life that ended too early because of the virus. He was an amazing man that you, people that met him, even one for one day, he impacted their life and got a, and, and just had this attachment to him because of just the, who he is. And he's, no one can be replaced, but that man was really special. Just a really special man. Thanks to Dana for sharing her remembrances of her dad. We would like to profile more of your loved ones who are dying from the coronavirus. If you're interested, drop us a line, newstips at kgw.com. Back to you.